see? The context is verse, starting from verse 23. It says, Jesus walked in Solomon's porch in the temple of Jerusalem. Then came the Jews around about him, means they surrounded him, and said, How long does that make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. They are alleging that he's talking ambiguously. He's not putting forth this claim clear enough. That's a charge, a false charge. Because we know he didn't speak ambiguously. He put forth his claim that he is the Christ, he is the Messiah. But the Jews want to pick up a fight. They didn't like his preaching. Him calling them, you generation of wipers, you whited sepulchers, you wicked and adulterous generation, you fools, you snakes. Would you like to hear people addressing you like that? And the Jews were not a people to forget in a hurry. So they find the man alone, they surround him, brandishing finger in his face. Come on, tell us. Why don't you tell us? They want to pick up a fight with him so they can work themselves into a frenzy and give him a good bashing, get their own back. So Jesus says, I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. He said, my Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. 28, verse 28. Verse 29, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Verse 30, I and my Father are one. In this, to see that once the man has accepted faith, he remains in faith. I as the teacher sees to, see to that, as well as God Almighty sees to that. In purpose, we are one. But the Jews were looking for trouble. And if you're looking for trouble, you, you don't have to go very far. You get it around the corner. So, they picked up stones again to stone him. So Jesus says, many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do ye stone me? So they say, for a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. Kufa. Because the thou being a man makes thyself a god. You are a man, you're claiming to be God. There's another false charge. First false charge was that he was talking ambiguously. Now another false charge that you're claiming to be God. That's the Jews alleged. The Christian agree with the Jews. They said he did make such a claim, but he was entitled to it. Let us hear what Jesus says. The Jews say he blasphemed. The Christians say he did, but it is no blasphemy because he was entitled to. What does Jesus say? He says, is it not written in your law? Verse 31. Is it, verse 32. Is it not written in your law? Law means the Torah. I said, ye are gods. Ye, you, are gods. If he, God Almighty, called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, I mean the prophets are called gods in our language, man. The prophets. God Almighty speaks to Moses, and he says, Behold, I have made you a god to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. In the book of Psalms, 82nd Psalm, verse 6, it says, Ye are gods, and all of you are the children of the Most High. That's the genius of the Jewish language. That when a person is called God, he is not God. Like in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, the Bible says, And the devil is the God of this world. Is he God? The devil, shaitan. No, this is your language. This means he is in control, so you say he's God. Moses is God to Pharaoh, and you Jews are all gods. That is the genius of the Jewish language. Now, you can't say, confer divinity on that. He said, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. If he called them gods, and the scripture cannot be broken, means you can't contradict me. Say ye of him whom the Father had sanctified and sent into the world, that thou blasphemest, because I said, I'm the son of God, which is nothing, man. God has got sons by the tons in our community, in our language. Why are you trying to find fault with me? when I'm only saying I'm the son of God, when others are called gods. The verse statement Brother Shorosh referred to from my book, what is his name? I took the trouble to give him all my books. All the ammunition I have, I send it to him. He asked for it, I send everything, all that I had written. Everything, all the facts are given in black and white. I said, now you can work from this. It's easier to answer. Once you have it in black and white before you, you know my arguments beforehand. I was not afraid. Because I know none of these arguments can really be, intellectually can be contradicted. 
Listen. God Almighty says, in the Quran now, another test is given. Says, Most certainly Messiah, Jesus the son of Mary, is no more than an apostle. Many were the messengers that passed away before him. And his mother was a virtuous woman, a saintly woman. And they both ate food. So, what's exceptional exceptional about that? We all eat food, don't we? No. This is in reference to the idea that they are gods or supernatural. The Roman Catholics call Mary the mother of God. Mary is the mother of God. Jesus is the son of God. And as God, as our brother Shorosh, as well as many Christians believe that he is God in human form. He is God incarnate. So, if they are such godly people, then they both had food. So if they had food, that means they had a call of nature. If you eat, you must look for the toilet sooner or later. Or look for the bush or the rocks. It can't be helped. God Almighty doesn't tell you in those words. But listen to what he says. Unzur. Kaifa nubayjino lahumulayati. He says, see how we make our signs clear to you. That they both had food. The implications of eating food. Unzur. See. How we make our signs clear to you. Summanzur. Have another look. Look. Have another look. How they have deviated from the path. Gone away from the true path. Attributing to God an animal nature. That he is like a man. We are made in his image. What image? This image? This is the monkey image. We are all glorified monkeys. Some look like chimpanzees. Some like baboons. Some like something else. You know? Gorillas. All of us. We are all glorified monkeys. Is that the image God is talking about? <laughs> and the Christian says yes. Christian says yes. I said God said in the book of Genesis, quoted by Dr. Shorosh, he said, and God said, let there be light. I said, did he say that with his mouth? He said, yes. Did he utter the words? He said, yes. So God has got a mouth? He said, yes. So if he's got a mouth, he must have teeth as well. Teeth, teeth. Can you imagine a toothless God, a God with a teeth? <laughs> Can you imagine a God like that? So he says, no, he must have teeth. Yes, he's got teeth. Then I said, he's got a tongue. He said, yes, he's got a tongue. Then he must have a larynx and the lungs. He said, yes. Then he's going to talk, 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 you know, the light, sun, moon, stars, millions of creation. He's talking, 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 his mouth goes dry. So he must need liquid to lubricate. If this type of mouth he has, he must need some lubrication, no? He said, yes. So once that lubrication goes in, there must be an outlet as well, no? Can you imagine? What are you bringing God down to? An anthropomorphic conception. God is like a man. Then talking about plural. God said, he says, Elohim, Im. The first chapter of Genesis, chapter, verse 3 also. Elohim, in Hebrew, Elohim, that God. I said, you know, Elohim is a plural. Yes. <laughs> My Arab brother says, yes, it's plural. There are two types of plurals in Hebrew and Arabic, which he confirmed, and dual as well. Singular, plural, and dual. I, I, singular, dual, and plural. Yes, Arabic as well as Hebrew. But in, in every Bible, there are a hundred different versions. The word is Elohim, gods. I haven't seen a single Bible yet which says, gods said, let there be light. It should be gods, not God. It's Elohim. It says, what is this? Im. Ask the Jew, ask the Arab. But if it doesn't suit us, we ignore. Im is a plural of respect in Hebrew. In Arabic, we have two types of plurals, same like Hebrew. When Allah says in the Quran, Inna nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun. It is we who have sent down the revelation and it is for us to protect it. Ask any Muslim, the most simplest of us, how many gods are there? He says one. Then who is this us? Who is this we? Ask the Arab. 
No Arab in 1400 years has pointed a finger at the Muslims telling them that you are worshipping more than one God. When the Quran says, Qul huwa Allahu ahad, say is Allah the one and only, then no Arab questions the Muslim to say, look, who is this we, who is this us? Why don't you ask us? Why don't you ask your Arab brethren? Who is this we, who are this us? He says, don't you know? You speak Arabic, Arabic is your language, you know we have two types of plurals, plural of numbers and plural of respect. This is plural of respect in our language.